Hey everyone, welcome to today's video on the beginner's guide to setting up Shopify from scratch, full setup. Very, very simple, very straightforward. Now, I always like to make these uh, Google Docs to give a bit of a guide frame. It'll be in the description. You can use it as you sort of see fit. I mean, so firstly, you need to set up Shopify. If you already have it set up, fantastic. You can skip that step. If not, use that link. That is an affiliate link. After you have that set up, the main things that you want to set up are um, your Shopify uh, payments and PayPal. Okay, those are the main two, right? The reason you use Shopify payments is basically it integrates directly with Stripe through Stripe for their processing. So you get Amex, Visa, MasterCard, pretty much everything you need from a credit card point of view. Um, and also PayPal, right? Which also PayPal has PayPal paying for installments. If you are an existing brand in that, um, you can also look at tools like Klarna, Afterpay, um, ZipPay, um, all of those natively integrate into Shopify and I'm gonna go into that. Um, your hosting, there's a lot of different hosting options out there, right? Shopify even have their own. It's all much of a muchness, right? It really just comes down to price. Um, I, I, I personally just use GoDaddy, a few bucks, right? So I, I don't, I'm not too stressed about finding that but um, so I recommend uh, just GoDaddy. You can have a look at this link here. The thing with GoDaddy and stuff as well is they're all incentivized to integrate natively with Shopify. You just go under settings, domains, which I'll show you, connect domain. It'll pick up the domain and it'll automatically import the the, the settings, right? The, for, um, for that accordingly, okay? So it's very, very straightforward. You'll find it's it's very simple. I don't need to go into that in absolute detail. You'll, you'll nail it, like it literally just in the setup. You know, you choose, if it's GoDaddy, you log in, and there you go, there's your, your domain. Um, depending on which ones you choose, you may have to put in some custom DNS entries. That's why I just choose like GoDaddy. Google domains has moved to Square domains basically now. Um, as I said, Shopify have it too, but Shopify is more expensive. So, you know, um, as I said, that's just why I sort of use GoDaddy. Um, you never really do much else in a domain. The good thing with GoDaddy as well is um, integrates with Google. I What I mean by that is, I use Google Admin, so you can make business emails. So, you know, ricky.hayes at dogs.com, um, for an example, that's why I use that. So I get my Gmail, I have all of that there, and I can make multiple mailboxes as I see fit. Um, next, we'll make the logo. Now, I use this tool, so let's get into that before we do that. We wanna create a logo, and because we're sort of in the, the dog space, I'm gonna try and find something in the pets. Next. Shopify obviously try and make this is through Shopify. Um, so you know, like I, <clears throat> you just follow these steps. Now you can use tools as well, like Canva. I know a lot of people do that. I just use the Shopify one, honestly. Um, that's just my sort of personal preference. It does a really good one. Now, when I think of of, of dogs and in that sort of space, I I like calm. Okay, when I think of pets, I think calm, and we're going to call it. Um, Mm. Uh, something catchy, um, canine love, canine uh, pal. Okay, um, you can put in a slogan um, for all canine lovers, uh, pals, uh, pals. Okay, just try and think of something like that. Um, tell us where your logo will be used, website, uh, social media. Most people are not gonna be doing any of these, but obviously you can do that as well. And you can see how like, you know, just using some simple AI, um, nothing amazing, but you don't need anything too amazing, right? I like these, these are simple, straightforward. I don't like that one because it's a frog, that one's a rabbit, that one's a cat. I definitely want something more with a dog. I quite like this. Um, I, I quite like that or this one. Um, it has or, or even that one. I feel this one encapsulates the most because I like the dog logo. So, and then we can edit the logo. Um, you can change the fonts as you sort of see fit. Okay, and this is just in there as well. I'm just going through a few to see if any really, uh, I like that one. Uh, it feels friendly, okay? Uh, colors, I like a nice 
That one feels really nice to me. I like that nice soft colors very much on the eye. Um, and let's type in uh, find animals. I just like to double check we got dogs. You can see it's limited, so Canva does have its benefits, but for what it's worth, I think that's fine as a starting point. And then you literally just download, put in your email address. I'll do that now and we'll upload it into the store once we get to that step. All right, so as you can see here, I've got my logo, right? Simple as that, right? Nothing amazing. And you can definitely do more in Canva as well if you wanted and, and edit this more accordingly. It's just a starting point for this tutorial. That's great. So it just sends it to your email and that's it. You can also generate domains. Um, you can use the domain generator. A lot of them have this, right? So this is nothing new. As you can see, it's actually not working well. Um, so all, as I said, like in GoDaddy and that, you can put in the domain generator, it'll tell you what's available and what's not available. I generally try and aim for the default, which would be like something like canine.pal at um, caninepal.com. Okay, uh, mini.use.io, depending on your business.ai. You know, I try and stick to .com. It's what everyone's used to. Okay, um, so try and stick to something like that. That's also something to consider where you might want to change your logo. And you can see I've logged in. You might want to change your logo to fit that um, based on the availability of that domain. So make sure you check the domain too. This again is a starting point. The cool thing is really easy to change. For the sake of moving on though, um, we've now made the logo. Next, you want to add products and so on to your store. So on our demo store, we've already added products. Okay, this is just a demo um, example. So you can add products, really, really easy to add products. Okay, you really like this one. You want to um, add the product. You can see this one's archived. So me changing it does not have any problem whatsoever. Give it a title. So again, um, <coughs> pardon me, a title relevant to the name of the product. Okay. Um, I see a lot of people put things like TM and so on on the end, which are sort of single product stores and that works. Um, it depends what type of business you're running. If you're running a sort of a drop shipping one product, that sort of can work. Um, a lot of businesses, they literally just have the name of the product, okay? So, you know, with this one, you can just update it, save, add a description. In the description, you wanna add the, about the product, okay? Um, and we'll go into how that appears on the website very soon um, as we sort of go down that path. I recommend um, you can use tags and collections. Um, so it's a matter of how you prefer to do it. You can you can manually add it to a collection or you can add tags and it can add to multiple collections. So that's entirely up to you. I'll get to that in a moment as we get to collections. You wanna add your variants, right? So obviously the variants relating to the product. If you're selling dog, dog collars, you might have four different types of sizes for those colors. And for each of those colors, you might also have um, uh, sizes and then colors okay so in size small you might have red blue green yellow um, and so on and so forth right so you just add variants and you can add uh, variants as you sort of see fit so if we add here you can then just change that you add the price the unit cost now I recommend adding that because then you can actually see your profit and you see your profit margin um, if you have physical locations that works most of the time um, you don't need to worry about that SKU is your stock keeping unit um, and uh, barcode. So most of the time people would use a UPC, um, a universal product code. Um, that's if you physically have the products and you have a barcode on it, so you can scan it with a barcode scanner. So those things are really imp important, okay? Uh, you wanna track, always wanna track the quantity um, and you wanna choose, you know, location. So location in this case is Printful because obviously we're just using that as an integrated app uh, just for an uh, example. Meta fields as well, you can add things like meta fields. As you can see, it's for Google so that you can rank higher in Google accordingly as well, okay? Once this is all set up, you can, you can duplicate this and then just change it per one, okay? And you can change the image so it reflects the, the, the product itself, okay? Very straightforward. You can archive or unarchive the product. Um, and again, you add your prices and stuff. So once you have this set, you can actually duplicate the whole product and change it for the next one. I mean, I, what I generally do is I make a base template um, and I archive it and then I just duplicate when I want to make a new product, let's say on a new Shopify brand. <laughs> saves me time and saves me effort. You got your theme template as well. So you can add different theme templates based on the theme. Now we're using Daybeautify. You'll see in the in here as well, you can start Daybeautify 14 days free. Um, go there and uh, you can start to get Daybeautify. We'll get to that in a moment. 
Again, Metafield is something a bit more down the line. It's really SEO related. It does really, really help. You can also add your SEO meta title, meta descriptions to each of these images as well. I strongly recommend doing that. Obviously, it depends on how you're planning the market. My preferred type of marketing is uh, influencer and SEO. Uh, a lot more admin heavy, but a lot more long term. Um, it, it gets better results, okay? Obviously, paid ads works really well too, and I use it a lot for remarketing, but going this slower approach, you get more profit margins down the line. Um, you can then add your SEO title and uh, page title, meta description, and URL handle. Now, how I recommend you do that is you have up to 70 characters. You try and use most of those 70 characters, okay? And you use keywords that are high converting. You can use what's called the Google Keyword Planner. If you want a video on that, let me know down below where you can look at keywords relevant to this. So if I was looking at um, Samsung case, I would have that in there, okay? Because that we both know is going to work really well, okay? And I would also have Samsung phone case, probably. Um, uh, for Just SEO. This does not affect the product title okay as you can see they're separate so when you go to their website you want to show them transparency is what I recommend and then on the SEO title which works for Google Ads Google SEO Google Merchant Center you want to show this there as well okay and it and you can also update the meta description as well which I definitely recommend that you would do as well that's sort of a condensed version of this okay so you want to add more uh, just purely about the product, make it very simple and straightforward as an example. You click save and you can edit this as you see fit, okay? That's pretty much all you need to do. Now, the other thing a lot of people get confused by is collections. So you have products and then you have collections, okay? So how I generally recommend um, that you, if we make a new collection, is we're gonna call it collection one, example. You don't have to worry about a description for it. The collection description will show on the collection page for that said product. A lot of the time I see people don't worry about it, but you can definitely add it in if you have a lot of collections, which I recommend. It helps with SEO as well. Uh, so the, the key things to add is an image. You always want to add an, an image here as well. Um, and then you want to use the default collection type. Make sure it's published to all channels, very important. And you can also optimize again the SEO title, SEO description and handle. Now how I do it is I go automated and I go product tag. Most businesses do product tags because uh, a Samsung case, as an example, might actually be relevant inadvertently to three collections. So by adding a tag and making a tag example means that when I go back onto the product page, okay, um, and I'll save this. You can see nothing's there right now, but if I go back um, and I go back to this one and I add example, Okay, what should happen is when I go back to collections, okay, product tag is equal to example. Uh, that should be working. Did I not type it in that? Sometimes I think there's a little bit of lag, but basically you sort of get my point. Um, you can manually add products as well, but I generally recommend that you would add a um, product tag it just makes it easy for when you go back to the products um, as you sort of further head down this path as well now that was the wrong product pardon me next product I've definitely add, uh, added that <coughs> let's let's see okay sometimes it can be a bit fidgety to add okay Very weird, product tag is equal to uh, example. Unless I've typed that in wrong. Okay, well, some look, let's just change it for the sake of this because we already have these predefined ones. I'm just gonna put in iPhone even though I know it's a Samsung. And then I'll go back to the product. Take out, uh, and then I will add iPhone. Uh, So it should automatically already be there. And you can see I've gotten, it says it's gotten two products. Okay. Um, I don't know why uh, it is not showing them right. Oh, pardon me. Sorry, it's showing archived. Okay. So 
that makes more sense now. So that's probably what I missed there. So you sort of get my point there. It takes a little bit of finessing. Um, in terms of home, that's just your home. Orders is when you get orders coming through. Customers, uh, people that have subscribed to your list, people that have um, gone to check out, added their details, people who have purchased, okay? Uh, content is content all on your website, so you can add meta objects and files, and this is sort of like your file repository of all your images that have used. Analytics is, as it says, analytics, sales, conversion rates, so on and so forth. This is a demo store, so you can see we get you know traffic, but no sales and stuff as well, so you can sort of see that. You got your marketing. You never really want to use this, if I'm honest with you. Um, I never really do. And discounts, discounts for when you want to add discount codes, so Day Beautify 10 as an example. Your sales channels is um, for things like Google, YouTube, your online store, we'll get to that where you actually edit your online store. For, so a lot of integrations. Um, and then you've got your apps. <clears throat> so you can use various apps as well. So, you know, for various backend purposes, very important to try and use the apps um, that will further help that. Now let's go back to settings. So you got your plan, as you can see, we're just on a test plan. Um, the main things that you would be after is your payment gateway. So under payments, you've got payment. Now we have Stripe because this is an older demo store, so it would allow Stripe, but most of the time you want to switch to Shopify payments. They, they make that the default, right? So I recommend just using Shopify payments. That'll be the default anyway. Um, additional payment methods. This is where you can add PayPal and you can add other ones like, and you will see search by provider. So if I put in, let's say after pay. Okay, so you can add Afterpay as an example. Okay, so you can add multiple. Um, so by default, you want to have automatically at checkout. Um, you can add gift cards as well. It's up to you. Manual payment methods. Not many people do manual payment methods, but you can. At checkout, I recommend as well that um, don't have uh, required to log in before checkout. Um, you don't want to do that. It will hurt your conversion rates. Um, you want to have it so that you can get their phone number or email because then you can remarket via email marketing or SMS, which works really well. I'll be going into future videos on that as well. Um, I require first and last name. A lot of legalities, you require that. Um, company name, leave these as the recommended, okay? Um, and um, look, you can put this as optional. I recommend actually putting that as optional. Um, now, with the marketing options, I recommend having these predetermined, okay? Um, so that you can capture them, especially SMS, you have to make sure they go in your legal section. We'll get to that in a moment. You don't really wanna add tips unless you've got a proper brand. Um, it works really well when you have a small business and you have a very devoted audience, but most businesses, especially large businesses, you don't normally add that. So it's, it's a cool little feature, but no one really uses it, truthfully. Um, and then your abandoned checkout emails work really, really well. But if you use different ESPs, um, a lot of people, for instance, use Clavio, full transparency in Dobutify. We're making our own one that'll allow you to do this and stuff as well, which I'm really excited to bring in the future. Moving on, um, you got your shipping delivery, okay? So very important you set up your shipping delivery, um, obviously based on where your customers, you're trying to get customers and where you're shipping your products to, okay? Very important that you do that. <clears throat> Most of us won't be doing local delivery, pick up in store, but if you are, it supports both of those as well. You can add customizations and you've got your save box. Now, if you integrate like a various courier, it'll help bring a lot of this in as well. So you can add a new profile. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, I need a drink. So you add your products, let's say we add this one, done. We call it shipping zone. Okay, ignore the typo there. Um, and you want to create the zone. Okay, and let's say it would be United States. Okay, especially for beginners when you don't have a fulfillment service provider, like here in Australia, there's like Australia Post and stuff as well. Um, I don't know why that's um, not filtering. United States. I mean, uh, anyway, look, it doesn't really matter. For the sake of this, we'll choose Samoa. Um, and then you can um, add rates. So, you know, you want to have a, a flat rate or calculated um, using an app at checkout. If you're using a courier service in that country, you can use that. Otherwise, use a flat rate. Okay. Um, so you want to, most people will go custom and you call it um, 
<clears throat> uh, delivery. You can call it delivery or shipping time. And I always like to put in um, like uh, the amount of days. So try and be transparent about it. You don't want to lie. Um, so for, again, if it's like drop shipping, one to two weeks. Okay. Or it sounds a lot better when you put five to eight business days. Okay. Just sounds better that way. Um, and again, <clears throat> tracking number provided. I always add that. Um, or you can add ships next day. Okay. Um, in many regards, you'd probably want to add both tracking number provided ships next day. Okay. Um, and price, you want to add a pricing condition. Okay. Um, and I generally do it based on as uh, the two options are either weight or price. Okay. Now, if you're running a, a, um, a business where you have quantity of products there, usually weight is the better one to choose because um, if you go off price, it it helps, but it can be uh, you can wear a lot of costs on the back end. So I've seen most of the time, especially long term, people can generally go weight. So I go zero. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. So I will go minimum weight is zero. Maximum weight is let's say um, uh, 0.99 kilos. Let's say as an example, I generally do that. Um, and the price would be because shipping is pretty expensive now, you know, like you're probably looking at let's say $12.99 and you want to add multiple. Okay. Oh, pardon me. I went on, I was meant to go on weight. Um, and so for that, the reason that you do that and you add multiple tiers. So, and I, the reason I do 0.99 is because the next one will be one kilo to 1.99, two to 3.99 and as you move up the tiers do it that way weight is generally a better way of doing it because someone um, If you go purely based on price someone might have a very low weight item um, And it might be a $10 item and it might cost you $12 to ship. Okay um, Weight just has a, a lot more of a dynamic fluid approach to it Obviously you can do it based on price too, but that's generally how I do it and you can see that what you can do is you can then add rates so what I do is I will copy most of this flat rate custom. Okay. Make it pretty much the same. And you usually want to at least go up like in this example per kilo, at least $2. So we put it $12.99 to start with. Now it'll be $14.99. Okay. Obviously you will know based on your country where you're marketing to best. And then I would put one kilo to 1.99. Okay. And you can see done. And we can see how now we're starting to build this where it's a lot more of a dynamic fluid approach. Taxes and duties, uh, hold on, pardon me. Taxes and duties, obviously based on where you're at, make sure that you have your taxes and duties set up. If, um, depending on when your business is at, you may not need it right now, but please don't quote me on that. Please speak to an accountant in your country uh, to make sure that's okay. Locations is like what we saw before where we have, um, uh, <coughs> If you have actual physical location stores, warehouses, so you might have three different warehouses and they all stock it and you want to sort of manage, you know, where it's coming from, right? That's a bit more of an advanced one. Markets, we won't get into. Apps and sales channels, sort of like what we've seen, where we have various apps and sales channels for, for various things. Notifications. Um, I recommend turning all those on because especially as you build your team, having those just really helps. Uh, pardon me, I missed domain, so you can buy a domain, okay? Um, or connect a domain through a third party. See how Google domains or GoDaddy? So you wanna connect an existing domain and put your domain in, follow the steps, it's really easy. Once you have the domain connected, um, then your next step is to make it, so this is the primary, see how it's primary? Once you have another domain, make the actual domain your primary. This one will still exist, but it'll exist in the background. Now the other thing as well to keep in mind is your policies, um, contact information, insert template, la 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 la, fantastic. Um, rule returns, you know, enable rule returns to simplify return management. I recommend you do this, especially as you build out your brand. If you're starting, you don't need to have it immediately, but I definitely recommend that you look into this, okay? So you can just set this up um, and turn on. All right, it's a really important thing, especially these days, people want that level of transparency, which I think is a good thing. You can also enable self-serve, okay? Um, I recommend going to the new. 
Okay, self-serve returns. And just leave that on. That's all you need to do, okay? So now we have our policies as well. We already have those policies set up and now we can start to set up our storefront, okay? So here you go into online store under sales channels and you wanna set up your main menu navigation. So you've got preferences here. You can set up your SEO, uh, your title store, which is literally the name of your business and then a meta description. Really important as you build your business, you do that, use the 120 characters, add your logo and your Google Analytics and so on and so forth as well. You don't really need to set up Facebook, you do that through the sales channel, which we've already shown here as well. You can also restrict it um, if your store isn't presently open. Navigation is um, like what we've sort of already done here. You wanna add a navigation for your footer and your main menu at least. And in your footer, importantly, you want to add your terms of service, privacy policy, refund policy. You can really easily add them because Shopify make the, the templates for you. You can also um, add your contact information as well, which we've already done there, but you can see how easy that is. Um, at least add your, you have to add, uh, Google for instance mandate you need to have your privacy policy, refund policy, terms of service. I also have shipping policy and contact information. The more the better, okay? People do look at that stuff and you don't wanna get in potentially hot water. Pages is for different pages about your business as well. Blog posts is different blogs that you might have set up over time. And then your themes. So in this case, if you, um, are using Daybeautify, which I, as I said, I recommend that you use here. You get a 14 day trial of the full features. Um, and then you can also, um, uh, it, it goes to a free model as well. So there's no cost. So like with Shopify, yeah, Shopify, that link is three days free trial and then $1 a month. With Daybeautify, we go to free. You just won't have the advanced features, okay? So if we go into customize, this is where you can customize it, okay? So all of your widgets are then here. And you can also talk to live chat support as well. Okay. So here as well, you can add your pop-up settings and, and you can turn them off as you see fit as well. I'm just gonna turn them off for the sake of this example. Okay, now, um, age check, we wanna disable that just for the sake of this as well. And you can easily manage everything here. So you got your footer group, you got your general group. So in, with Day Beautify, you got your account settings, you, got, you can start a live chat with us and you can hide all of this as well. I recommend checking your quick start guide as well for how to set up Day Beautify because it is a very complex theme, but a very, very streamlined theme to help you. For the sake of this as well, you can click um, in the specific area and it, a lot of the times will take you to that area. So you can see that with the main menu, um, we have our main menu and the main menu is that navigation from the back end as well. Um, and you've got your pop-up settings here as well. You can enable exit trigger, which is what we're seeing there. We're gonna turn that off for the sake of, again, this sort of example, so it doesn't distract us. Um, you've got your theme settings, so you can use you know, your navigation app, being Clavio, Omnisend, and custom CSS if you want as well to really sort of go down that path. The main ones that people are really interested in is the announcement bar. You can enable the sticky um, and enable small text on mobile. Okay, so for this sake, we have follow us, you know, um, the announcement bar works really well. Um, get free shipping on orders over $100. So you know how we have it set with weight? You can also have another tier that regardless of weight, if over $100 in value, then you can set that as well, okay? So that's sort of how you want to set that. Um, and that's what I would recommend that you do there. With the images as well, you can add your slideshow images. So you can just click here um, and you can choose images as you see fit. Your products will automatically show um, accordingly as well. Again, because this is on the back end, that's why the products aren't showing because this is an example one. But the products normally would just, when you set the products and collections, the theme just picks that up accordingly. Now, if we go to the header menu, um, as I said, we also have our logo link. Um, so we can have multiple logos, okay? And so default inverted mobile and mobile inverted. Okay, a lot of people want um, either option, so we can explore free images, um, or you can add the logo like what we did before. So let me pause and upload that now. All right, fantastic, so I've uploaded the logo, and you can see it's changed, right? Definitely not optimized. 
okay? Um, it's definitely not optimized for this at all, but you can sort of see for the sake of that that we've now done the announcement bar and the logo. You've also got quantity breaks, which is a popular one. Um, this is actually being updated with Debutify right now. We are um, with version seven coming out. This will be really exciting. It's coming out literally in the next one to two days. Um, as well as this, you, this is where you can start to see a lot more of the in-depth as well, where you enable, disable, and have your options accordingly, okay? So if you're using Debutify, you can use any of these as part of your free trial. The Add to Cart Animation is a very popular one. The Back in Stock, the Breadcrumbs. Um, we have integrations as well, as we do integrations with a number of apps to try and help streamline your, your service. Uh, the other popular ones that I recommend that you look at is Shop Protect. Okay, sticky add to cart is a very, very popular one. And we show start ratings. Um, it really sort of helps with sales there as well and wish list. Okay, so uh, you can go under here. This is where you enable, disable um, the settings. And then when you're under <coughs> the sections, you can then manage the sections as you put it live onto the theme. Okay, under here as well, we're looking at the product page. You can look at the, <coughs> pardon me, you can look at an individual product page and as you can see, it pulls in the description accordingly. Okay, and you can customize this to sort of how you see fit. Um, you can even enable video looping and recommend it for you and so on and so forth on the product page. See how the add to cart just started to show that and we've got the sticky add to cart as well as you scroll down. And you can see as well, you've got your quick links, okay, because we've already set the menu. Um, you can add a sub menu and you can see how it's linked to our footer menu. So these are all real links that people can use to then verify that. This is really important, especially as you do marketing on Google Ads. It works very, very well. I recommend that you add your About Us um, and also this as well that integrates with an ESP email service provider. Okay, um, as I've said, these are all customizable. You can do it live, enable, disable various things as well as you sort of see fit. Okay, each of them, you can log into your account um, to enable, disable. Um, as well as follow, follow this tutorial as well. So hopefully that helps furthermore as well as you sort of further head down this path too. The little eyeball is to open and close it. Um, I definitely recommend, as I said, the announcement bar, the sticky add to cart, okay, and the, the cart animation at minimum. Um, there's also the quantity breaks and frequently brought together. We've got a lot of new widgets that are coming there as well. Your main menu as well, you can change that too. Um, a lot of people like mega menus, um, so we're further implementing that sort of as well. You can customize it to here as well and look at how you can um, add more options for your mega menu too. But that's sort of a base, right? I'm just trying to give you a very simple version for um, a base. Now let's see if there's anything else that we need to do. Once you want to exit, you can just go exit and your store is pretty much um, uh, it is set up. You can view your store live, okay? Um, you can also publish it as well and you can also edit the code. You don't really need to edit code much now because most things do all the work for you in that regard. And that's pretty much a main rundown of Shopify, okay? And then the next focus is basically your marketing. Okay, so social media marketing, um, organic social media marketing, we have videos on that too, as I sort of teach that as well. Again, if you have any questions, especially we get a lot of questions about with Debutify, just email support at debutify.com and we'll help you with that. Other than that, I hope this has been helpful for you today. Please ask any questions you have below. To ask us any videos you would like to see. We're going to be releasing at least three to five videos a week to try and help get your business underway. Thank you very much for your time. Be sure to subscribe, like and comment down below. Have a good day. Take care and goodbye.